Greetings from the Bearhawk Life, everybody. Today is Friday, February 14th, 2020, and today we're going to talk about fuel lines up until they get to the firewall, and then we'll we'll trace all the lines out of the firewall through the fuel system. So the Bearhawk has four fuel lines uh, from the wings, two from each tank. You have forward and aft. The forward line comes through the wing, down the front post, behind the instrument panel, and to the T down here at the, by the uh, floorboard. And then the rear line comes through the wing, down the rear post, and then along through here, underneath the threshold. The lines ultimately both run across the bottom of the floorboard to the fuel selector. The fuel then runs from the fuel selector across underneath the floorboards to the gascalator. There's an inline fuel filter and then to the fuel boost pump and then out through the firewall. Out of the firewall, the fuel lines begin here and then come across over to the engine driven fuel pump. Out of the engine driven fuel pump across the engine case, in front of the engine sump, down to the fuel controller. The fuel then exits the fuel controller, goes up through the baffling, where it comes through the cylinders, and then that's where it elbows into the fuel transducer, the red cube, into the fuel divider, and then each cylinder has a line runs to it. The red cube fuel transducer is mounted in line um, and it was a challenge to mount the fuel transducer uh, in line as it is but right now it's very secure. I have it mounted on a angle with two cushion clamps and my shadow is getting in the way. But the fuel transducer picks up the fuel flow and carries that information up to the EFIS. You may have noticed that my fuel lines will look a little bit different than some of the other fuel lines like the ones you would order from, say, Aircraft Spruce. I even have uh, similar lines for manifold pressure, for uh, fuel pressure. So this is a fuel line created by TS Flight Lines out of uh, Ridgeland, South Carolina. Tom Swearingen's the owner. and. Uh, He's done a great job with these lines, three times stronger than the types of fuel lines that you would get from, say, aircraft spruce or the normal fire sleeve type lines. With this Teflon coating, they're actually uh, higher temperature rated as well. Don Rivera recommended Tom Swearingen to uh, build the flight lines for me. Uh, Don is the owner of Airflow Performance, which created the uh, fuel injection system for the IO540. The fuel injection system from Airflow Performance is basically three components. I've got a fuel boost pump, which is underneath the floorboards. It's behind the fuel selector. And then uh, from there, the engine driven fuel pump has a line that runs up to the fuel controller, which is the FM150 fuel controller. This fuel controller is mounted in a horizontal position whereas most are in a vertical updraft position. I bought this elbow from Don. It's a 95 degree elbow. It points a little bit more upward towards the nose bowl. I have yet to mount the throttle control cable yet. I had to custom order that so that it would be the right length. Once that's installed I'll be done with the fuel system. And then finally the third component of the airflow performance fuel injection system is the divider. Uh, which comes mounted from the factory at Lycoming, which tells me that Lycoming has a lot of confidence in the airflow performance system if they are shipping these engines already pre-fitted with the airflow performance system. So that's just a short video describing the fuel system. You know, like everything else, it takes a lot of time. It helps have a guy like Tom Swearingen at TS Flight Lines and Don Rivera over there at Airflow Performance help. Uh, but uh, overall, it was a pretty pretty fun process learning the fuel system and putting in the fuel lines. 
I feel pretty confident about everything. You know, the fuel system is one of those areas, especially in first flights and early testing, that there's a lot of failures. Um, but with this system, I feel pretty strong and I feel pretty confident that uh, we shouldn't have any problems as long as everything's been plumbed properly. We'll certainly pull all the fuel filters uh, after testing, doing the first engine run up. We'll pull the filters again probably after a couple hours of flying until we feel confident that the lines are good and clear and that we're getting steady flow of fuel to the, to the engine. So, so I appreciate you guys watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the video, share it with your friends, and I look forward to talking with you next time. Thanks, guys.